down the uh, 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 triangle, merging with the, the right way up triangle, the male and the female principles uniting for, for the generative force. Mm. <laughs> so these guys were Kabbalistic and occultic. Yeah. And the, the same symbol was taken from the Rothschild coat of arms. Hmm. The difference being they have five arrows in, in one uh, claw and five fruit, all of fruit in the other. Hmm. Uh, the Rothschild was, yeah. even, was even mixed up in that, <laughs> in the revolution and the funding of it. And yeah. we know that because the, the brother who ran the Bank of France uh, was funding the, the U.S. side. Ah, okay, yeah. The, and these five uh, arrows represented the, the five suns going out in, in the world. Was that That's there? right. <laughs> That's very so, interesting. So everything is interrelated. Then on the other side of the Great Seal, it's interesting, you've got the pyramid there mm -hmm. with the capstone above the, the, the eye, the light. And what, it's, what it symbolizes, the rest of the pyramid, the, the, the largest part of the pyramid, the base of the pyramid, is society. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Oh, okay. It's all in confusion because only those above the light of the eye of Lucifer, the light bearer, mm -hmm. uh, know what's really going on. Hmm. Everyone else below is in different orders or factions which make up the body whole, the body politics. Yeah. And, and the pyramid stands in the wasteland of the world, sparsely, uh, sparse grass and shrubbery. That means wasteland. So the only order there is in the world is theirs. <laughs> That's what it means. And, and the idea that, uh, you know, Anuit Quept is that it has been implemented, basically, if I, if I interpret that correct. Yeah, and uh, yeah, as you can see, um, also announcing the birth of yeah, um, okay. Novus Ordo Seclorum, yeah. uh, a new worldly order, a new world order, basically, an earthly order. And, and this was in, I mean, the, the the thing wasn't put on the dollar, dollar bill until, what, what was it, 1933, I guess? <laughs> well, again, that's a bit of a, not quite true. Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you why. Yeah. And, and again, 1933 is interesting because he was 33 again. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, when you look into the, to the pre-revolutionary money that was circulating within the, 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 the Americas, mm. you find most of it was given out by big companies like Hudson's Bay, big corporations that were chartered from England. And they were tokens. They called them token money. And you could take it back to, to the local trading place and, and exchange it or buy things with it. Yeah. And you'll find if you look into the to the old coinage that was used, uh, and most of them had pyramids on them with all seeing eyes. Hmm. In the early 1700s, late 1600s. Yeah, yeah. So this has always been with us the same system because money is money. It, it doesn't matter as I say what it, what type it is. It's run by the same people in all types and all forms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, could could one say because I mean the the image of of the eye there with a with the rays going out is is a very in one sense a very religious theme. I mean there are tons of Im imagery on on you know the eye of God and all these things who, which ties back to you know the Christian idea of of the all seeing God in that sense. I guess I mean could could there be any suggestion that these guys these guys were just portraying that image here? No. <laughs> No, um, the, 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 all Freemasons are taught so much, a little bit, mm -hmm. of, of the hermetic sciences. And uh, they understood what the, the, the eye meant. You, you'll find the eye in all religions. Yeah, yeah. You, you'll even find, find references in the Old Testament. And uh, you'll find references in the, even the Nordic uh, stories. Um of Wotan and so on, yeah. who lost, loses an eye, he's left with one eye. He yeah. goes further back to Egypt, where Horus, in his battle with Seth, like who killed his father, it's all symbology but, mm. or allegory, but he's left with one eye, so that's the eye of Horus, hmm. sometimes called the eye of Ra. You know? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, this is an ancient system to do with the system. It, it, everything, in fact, in history that we're given is the same system yeah. in one form or another. And we're simply updating it and up, updating it like a computer every so often, <laughs> but using the same symbols 
sometimes changing the names. Do you think that there could be someone who has been, uh, you know, around for for all of this time to see all of these uh, changes taking place, or is this just a a system of 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 men who who you know implement these ideas? It's it's a bit of both. It depends how you would, uh, and that can be confusing, you know. But <laughs> but uh, uh, it depends how you define intelligence. Yeah, and it, yeah. it depends also how you define life. Mm. Um, what is life? Uh, what, are there other kinds of life? Is intelligence itself a form of life? Yeah. Uh, even today, all of these things are still being debated because it's like asking where do thoughts come from? Yeah. Uh, the, the, there's no one in the world of medicine can actually come out and honestly tell you uh, that the brain creates thought. Hmm. They can't tell you that yeah. because they, they, they can't they can't find where thought originates from. And hmm. underneath all the the, 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 the medical jargon, uh, it, it, they're still left with a big puzzle. Yeah. Do we produce thought or do we receive thought? Uh, so intelligence um, might be separate in a sense uh, from pure the purely physical. In some way. I mean, that, that's very interesting because, I mean, uh, I, I read an article a while back uh, about, you know, the the idea of of ideas being like, you know, viruses. And, and, and in that sense, I mean, if this, I mean, is an ideology that operates through human beings, I mean, this could be uh, what we're dealing with here, an, an idea that has taken root in, in us and now manifest, manifesting itself through our, uh, you know, through our lives, so to speak. Well, I, I do know that the, the big boys believe in this themselves. They mm. know this is taught to them as a fact. Yeah. And uh, that ideas can be transmuted or carried over vast distances uh, just by the force of the thought involved. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the force of the person using it. And it's interesting that, that Arnold Toynbee who was a big player in the training of Rhodes Scholars yeah. for world governorship, uh, he stated at one of his meetings that a, a thought can be picked up by people across the whole planet uh, at the same instant that the thinker is thinking it. <laughs> In other words, if it's a new thing, a new idea, yeah. they have a term for it. They'll say it's an idea whose time has come. <laughs> this, is, this is their format for their agenda. Hmm. And, and when it's thought by the right mind yeah. at the right time, other people will pick up on it. And you have that eureka experience. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, that to an extent is true. Now, children display these qualities, yeah. um, especially the best friends or even members of the same family. Mm. You'll find they'll start to whistle the same song or sing the same song at the same line. Uh, spontaneously, and then turn and laugh at each other. <laughs> and then as you grow up, you forget that because you're getting trained to live purely in the purely physical, yeah. and produce and consume. Yeah. I mean, uh, but, so there, there's definitely a natural telepathic ability that people are born with but yeah. most tend to lose. I mean, is this, I mean, are we tapping into the, the cosmic mind here, so to speak? I think it's more than just that. See, there are certain truths. This is the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, all the books that are thrown out there on the shelves for the consumers to gobble up mm -hmm. to do with uh, sciences of the occult, uh, the ancient sciences and so on, yeah. uh, are to mislead most of them. Hmm. They don't tell you the truth. Hence, that's why they have secret societies and all the degrees. Yeah. Uh, so anything that's put out there for the for the general public is written in a specific way because they are, the, the public are linear thinkers that take things at face value. Yeah. So they'll take a story as a literal truth and never look behind it for the allegory. Hmm. And that's why you see such craziness in the whole New Age movement. They don't. They cannot think behind that which is written down. Hmm. Interesting. Um, this is intentional. Because yeah. We're creating a movement for a different purpose. Yeah. But but in reality, yeah, behind the sciences were natural truths, natural sciences. Mm -hmm. um, you you don't simply pay money and learn them. 
to understand it all, even you have to go into the ancient uh, sciences. Mm. Um, and today, in this day and age, the modern day, we have thousands of guys claiming to be shamans. Yeah. And yet, uh, that's so untrue. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a show for the public and a money maker because they've trained the public to gobble up all the material that's out in the bookshelves mm. uh, and to run after these guys. Yeah. Shamans generally were born into families in hereditary fashion. So the father would be one or the grandfather and so on. Occasionally, they would pick somebody in a tribe. Mm. Now, all, all countries did this, including the Nordic peoples. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, in Scotland, too, we had our bards. Every, every clan had a bard, and the bard sure. knew, he memorized the history, of, the entire history of the clan going back for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he could recite that for weeks on end, nonstop. <laughs> yeah. And he was also the local shaman, mm. because words, as they said, and it's the same in all peoples across the planet, words have a, a magical qu uh, quality to them. Yeah. So you look at the Old Testament, and the first thing is they're giving you a clue of a story behind a story. The Adam and Eve story is nothing but allegory, but very important allegory. <laughs> uh, the linear thinkers take it at face value, and, and as always, they end up with this this silly religion that they have that yeah. ends up causing wars, and they kill each other. There's allegory behind it. So Adam is given the right to name the animals. Yeah. And naming something is very, very important in all of the occult sciences. Do, uh, if you have the name of something, mm -hmm. you have power over the entity or the being or the person. Mm. It's the same in, in the Old Testament where, where you find um, uh, Abraham you know, or, or Moses talking to, to the deity. He wants to know the name of the deity to get power over it. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> why the name is important. <laughs> Very so, interesting. The invocation in the occult, this is what came out of this. Yeah. If you know the invocation or the real name of the deity or the entity, then you could use that. And this is the kind of stuff that came out around the 1500s in Europe under the guise of hermetic sciences hmm. and has led to the present day of the New Age, uh, which is a real chaotic mess. Yeah of people trying to, to get power, personal power, when they don't realize that to be a, a proper uh, traditional shaman, you have to be born into it. You have to have special training in memory, for instance, hmm. uh, and you have to understand the sciences behind it. Yeah. It's not something you go out and buy. Of course not, no. Uh, I so, don't... so, yeah, this yeah. is a very important thing. Now, hmm. the word, too of a shaman mm. uh, or a tribal bard, um, if they knew the name, when they pronounced the curses on a person, everyone believed in it <laughs> because uh, it was, uh, that was their religion, basically. They knew that this guy had a certain power. Yeah. And so when he cursed someone and he used their name and he used the names of the curse, um, that uh, evoked a form of magic, you might say. You, and you, the, the the result was that the person would come to a sticky end. <laughs> I mean, do, do you, uh, it's always interesting to kind of you know uh, talk about what 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 the, that what the reason could be for that. I mean, uh, I myself to some degree believe you know that uh, uh, in the I guess power of belief. If we have you know a large amount of people you know going around and believing that things are going to happen or whatever, the, the likelihood is that they are going to happen. Because, yes. Because, we, you know, we bring the bring this on, so to speak. I mean, I guess this connects with the, uh, the law of attraction, what we focus on become reality, basically. Do you agree on that? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we, we can certainly attract certain uh, things to us, in a sense. Hmm. Uh, there's no doubt about it that... Uh, um, and the ancient Greeks would call it the creating a form. Uh, a form was, was literally a, a way of, of trying to express a concretized idea, mm. a power, a force, which was thought up by someone. Mm. And what they said, and, and, and many of the different Greek philosophers,